Hello friends, uh, welcome to the NIOS. I am Kaushal Kishore from Central University of South Bihar, Gaya. Today I am here to discuss upon a very interesting topic that is tools of thinking, questioning and concepts. The objective of today's session is to make the viewers familiarize about different tools of thinking in general and questioning and concept as tools of thinking in particular. After completion of this session, it is expected that the viewers will be able to tell the names of various tools of thinking, explain the importance of question, questioning in promoting thinking, use questioning as an effective tool to promote thinking in their classes and explain the importance of concepts in thinking. Okay, uh, let us talk about, first let us talk about questioning that is an important tool of thinking. Let us understand some basic fundamental things related to questioning and its role in thinking. Actually thinking is not driven by answers, but by questions, it is interesting. Answers do not promote to think, rather questions are the tools which promote someone to think upon. Suppose, had no questions been asked by those who laid the foundations for a field, for example, physics or biology, the field would never have been developed in the first place. For example, if the concept of gravity is there nowadays, if Newton had never asked this question, why did the apple fall down? It was the question which motivated him, which drove him to think upon. Evolution, that Darwin's concept, if he had never thought, if he had never questioned how human species has been evolved, we did not have this concept of evaluation. This question promoted, prompted him, motivated him to think upon and then he gave the concept of evolution. In fact, every field of knowledge stays alive only to the extent that fresh questions are generated. If generation of fresh, fresh questions is stopped in any field, that field will not survive anymore. The field is dead now. Only the questions keep it alive. To think through or rethink anything, one must ask questions that stimulate thought. If questions are not able to stimulate thought, it means they are not effective questions. Answers never stimulate thought, but questions stimulate thought. In fact, answers often signal a full stop in thought. The answer, again, the answer that helps in generation of further question truly contributes in promoting thinking. There are some kind of answers which provide a full stop. It, it is not supposed as a good answer, as in good answer. Rather, the answer that helps in generation of further question will be taken as good answer. The key to powerful thinking is powerful questioning. More powerful questions we ask, we raise, more powerful thinking is gen, uh, developed. Questions define the agenda of one's thinking. What kind of thinking is going on in my mind? What do I think is always reflected by my questions? If I ask questions, of lower level, it means my thinking process is going on a lower level. If I ask questions, raise questions of higher level, it means the thinking process going on in my mind is of higher level. Only students who have questions are really thinking and learning. If questions, students are not asking any questions in your class, then it is an alarming situation for you as a teacher. It means that the students are not learning, they are not really thinking. Because if they learn, if they think, then some questions definitely come to their mind. Moreover, the quality of the questions students ask determines the quality of the thinking they are doing. Again, that as I discussed earlier, the whatever quality of thinking is going on in their mind, that kind of quality questions they ask. Dead questions reflect dead mind. If I am not able to uh, raise good questions, I am asking dead questions, it will reflect my thinking is dead. 
Now let's talk about what questions about the questions in classrooms. Asking questions is at the very heart of we, what we do as teachers. Uh, obviously, the asking questions are our favorite thing as teachers. The role of teacher as questioner is as old as teaching itself. And the research on questioning is filled with the positive effects that result when teachers employ effective questioning strategies. It means if a teacher is able, capable to employ effective questioning strategies, it means learning or thinking is positively enhanced. The research is said like that. When people really want to learn something, they ask questions. Let me quote Charles de Gamo here. In 1902, he said that to question well is to teach well. Further, <clears throat> let us talk about some uh, facts and figures regarding questions in classroom. In fact, questioning is second only to teacher talk as the most used teaching strategy in classroom. Teachers spend up to 50% of instructional time posing questions. They use 50% times a big amount. Further, Brawldy in 1998 uh, told that teachers ask between 300 to 400 questions per day. Hastings 2003 told that a teacher spends almost one third of his time in classroom in asking questions. It's an, uh, more than enough time. Some, uh, it's quite wondering that if we ask so much questions and questions promote thinking, we are devoting so much time in questioning that it must promote uh, quality thinking in students. But the reality is different. Walsh and Sets in 2005 told that most of the questions asked by teachers are at the lowest cognitive levels. They are simply basic recall of facts and knowledge. So the maximum time, is spent, maximum time of questioning is spent in asking lowest cognitive level questions. In 2008, Hattie said that low level surface type questions lead to low level surface type answers. Higher order questions lead to deeper understanding by the students. But since most of the time, most of the, time the teachers are stuck with low level questions, obviously the low level thinking is developed or promoted in the learners. Further, Hattie in 2012 found in a study that 60 percent of the questions asked were based only on repeating the facts and 20 percent were based on processing. Kelly at all mentioned that teachers have good intentions when they pose questions to their students, but questioning is frequently used primarily as a tool to assess students. And this is a very uh, common understanding, particularly as in, in our Indian situations. As teachers, we think that questions are made to assess students. However, this is not the case. We frequently ask questions as a tool to assess students. Let us see that this is not the primary or the major or the only uh, role of questions. <laughs> Kelly et al. further say that while students' responses to questions provide the teacher with valuable data, while doing assessment particularly, they come to know that uh, how students are learning, what uh, next has to be done. But an over-reliance of using questioning for this purpose diminishes the value of questioning as a mean to prompt thinking and exploration. If all the time we are using questioning as a tool of assessment, it actually loses, the idea of questioning loses its value of as a tool or as a mean to prompt thinking and exploration. Simply it becomes, remains the tool of assessment. Furthermore, students are likely to perceive questioning as something someone does to them rather than a behavior they should do for themselves. They think if as a teachers we are asking questions every time for the sake of assessment only, then the student think that questioning is an activity uh, which someone does to us rather than they do not think, they do not 
realize that questioning should be done by them for themselves. And this problem is further enhanced when neither teachers nor students understand the purpose of the questions. And this is the situation in our classrooms. Quick in 2013 urges, and it's interesting to uh, uh, read this, urges teachers to stop the insanity of asking too many questions. Uh, we are fascinated about asking many more questions in our class. Quick said that rather than focus on questioning as a mean to assess, the use of questioning as a means to assist must be promoted. The only role of questions must not be limited to the assessment only. Rather, we must encourage the use of questioning as a means to assist. In other words, assist students in understanding that questioning is a tool they can use to propel their thinking and learning. They can use the, this idea of questioning, this tool of questioning to promote their own learning instead of answering the questions for assessment only. Let us have a look which kind of questions we find or we see in our classrooms. There are different categorizations. If we categorize uh, questions, we can uh, categorize uh, most of the questions in two categories, either lower level questions or higher level questions. It can be understood even on the basis of Bloom's taxonomy. If, if I take an example of cognitive domain, the questions Seeking answers for knowledge level or understanding level can be uh, said at lower level question. For example, if I am simply asking, okay, name the capital of country India, it's a lower level question in which simply recalling is there or fact, answering the fact is there. And on the other hand, there are higher level questions. In terms of Bloom's taxonomy, if the question is promoting student, encouraging student to analyze the things, to synthesize the things or to evaluate the things, it can be considered at higher level questions. Another categorization categorize, categorizes the questions into for the two categories. One is factual, another is inquiry questions. Generally, factual questions are closed-ended questions. What is the name of uh, the capital of India? It is a factual question, it is a closed-ended question. Whereas, the inquiry questions are generally open-ended questions in which how can we develop uh, secular harmony, secularism in our citizens? It's a kind of inquiry. It's an open-ended question. It promoted higher level thinking. It promotes higher level thinking. Another categorization may be that we can categorize questions into three categories. One, questions that a student can answer. This, interestingly, this categorization should be done by the students. One questions that students can answer, another questions that a student can find the answer for and the questions that cannot be answered. But keep one thing in mind here and we will discuss further as well that the questions that cannot be answered are equally important. They are very valuable questions. We will discuss uh, in further slides. Another uh, type of questions we categorize in our classroom are simply based on we commonly know on the basis of lesson planning that are introductory questions, problematic questions, developmental questions, probing questions and assessment or evaluatory questions. Introductory questions are asked initially to introduce a lesson and generally introduction done by questioning approach is generally completed with the with a problematic question and to un while answering this problematic question, we generally announce the topic of today's lesson. While developing the lesson or while teaching the, in the classroom, developmental questions are asked. The purpose of introductory questions is totally different. The purpose of problematic question is different. The purpose of developmental question is different. While teaching, if we want to uh, probe into, we want to get answers deeper answers from uh, regarding a concept from a student, we use probing questions. And at the last of the lesson, we try to assess the status of learning, students learning, then we pose questions which are called assessment questions or evaluatory questions. Let us discuss when we ask questions, when we use questioning as a tool in our classrooms, what should we do and what should we avoid? 
For this uh, do's and don'ts, particularly I have taken reference, uh, which is quite interesting, Kelly at and Kelly at all's work. This team has done interesting, fascinating work in suggesting what should be done and what should not be done while asking questions. According to Kelly et al, shifting some of the responsibility of questioning from the teacher to the student takes some thought and action. In general perception, in general understanding of a classroom, it is taken that the responsibility of asking question is of teachers, not of the students. It is a general notion, but this, they are uh, saying that this responsibility must be shift. Research indicates that students rarely pose the type of questions in class that demonstrate their desire to learn. Traditionally, both teachers and students perceive the role of the teacher is to ask questions and the role of the student is to respond. Kelly et al, this group suggests that this, there should be a shift and to shift the responsibility of questioning from teacher to the student, they suggest that it can be done by collaborative question generating. What is this idea? This idea says that what a teacher should do, teacher should form small groups of the students, give them a piece of paper and ask them to use different color pens and write different questions came into their mind regarding the topic. So, kind of collection of question is done, question is prepared in this group and thus a variety of questions are generated. This is idea of here, teacher is not asking the questions, rather students are generating the questions and the responsibility has been shifted. This is called collaborative question generating. The teacher should use or think aloud to share genuine questions you have while reading, listening or viewing new information. Make sure students understand that you are sharing aloud questions you have rather than prompting them to answer the questions. It means then well as a teacher I am reading something or reading a text or telling something, I must raise some questions in between and say this is, these are the simply loud thinking questions. It is not necessary that you have to answer, it's, they, these questions are not posed to answer, just simply to think upon, these questions have been posed. Further Kelly et al say that never devalue irrelevant or silly questions from a student. Instead, respond positively by exploring briefly the reasons why they may have asked the questions. As a teacher, most of the time we do that if some student asks a silly question or relevant question, either we scold him or her or say this is not, uh, this question does not belong to today's topic. Why are you asking these silly questions? You do not understand so much uh, such little, little things. We should not devalue the questions, we should not demotivate the question. Rather, we respond positively and we must try to understand why this question has been asked by the learner. As a teacher, foster curiosity and questioning by providing powerful stimuli. We should provide various picture books, photographs and works of art. We should read a pro provocative text which promote students, which provide, provide stimulus to the student to question, to develop curiosity, curiosity among them. Further quoting Kelly et al, uh, et al, I am going ahead. They say that create a notebook titled I am wondering to record your questions and periodically share some of your question with the student. A teach, as a teacher I should prepare, I should keep a notebook with me and in that book, a notebook I should regularly write my questions and I should share uh, these questions with my students. And I, have, I should also ensure such kind of book is also prepared by each and every stu individual student and they should also share their questions with each other and with the teacher. For focus on questions, not answers. It is very important. What traditionally we do in our classrooms that most of the time we are focusing only answers, not the questions. Kelly et al suggests that focusing on questions is much more important because the, these, the questions are the tools which are actually reflecting the thinking. Show that you value questioning for its own sake. You do not always have to know the answer. Unanswerable questions are valuable too. Unanswerable questions are very valuable. Allow plenty of thinking time after asking. 
whenever you say do you have any questions immediately don't uh, start saying new things wait give time to the students same situation should be done when you ask a question when you pose a question in front of a student give them sufficient time to think upon to ponder upon and then they reply if you enhance your time there are certain researches which say that only usually teacher give only 1 second or 2 second after posing the question this time is not sufficient for a student or for a learner to think upon rather you should enhance this time this duration and whenever you enhance this duration positive results are there thinking is improved in the learners give students time to write down their questions and explore them with one another create a culture of inquiry encourage exploration wondering and questioning by posing meaningful real life problems we must respect all the questions all questions are important we should not discourage the this tendency of questioning uh, most of the time if uh, we find that uh, most of us as teachers do that if a question if a student asks so many questions we start ignoring his or her questions and he says tumhare paas hamesha question hota hai and this should not be the way share your questions by doing so student learn that asking question is not a sign of weakness otherwise what kind of impression goes with the learners that if i ask question it means i have not understood that thing if we create such kind of impression in a class the student the students start hesitating asking questions rather we must promote this thing that if you ask good question it means you are learning provide a strong provocation a stimulus or hook to get students thinking wondering and questioning and then step back and have them share and respond to one another encourage student to student questions and responses by withholding your own response and asking who would like to respond for example if one student is has asked a question instead of immediate you response that that question let you ask this question to another student and let them give a chance to think upon and reply upon provide positive response to student questions obviously whatever question a student ask you must respect it you should share what is the purpose behind your question what you want to enhance or promote with the help of this question create a question wall a chart to keep a record of thought provoking questions posed by the students map questions during classroom discussion to see how many questions were asked and if most importantly students asked each other questions and this next is kelly et al are suggesting interesting thing that assign questions for homework we what we do we pose some questions and ask a student to keep writing those answers to those questions as homework they are suggesting instead of asking them to write the answers ask them to prepare questions as homework they must read a topic and prepare questions based on that topic and this will reflect their thinking incorporate tag into your students is a terminology given by kelly et al and they say that uh, after a student shares ask a student to tell them what they heard one student share something ask another student what they heard ask the next student to ask them a question and the last student to give them a compliment or suggestion so it will involve uh, all the students and thinking will be promoted give a student time to research answer to their questions as we discussed that uh, sufficient time must be given to the students to before answering some interesting do's and don'ts has been suggested by fisher r they say that as children grow older they often grow out of the questioning habit we need to fight the tendency and fight it find strategies to foster curiosity and encourage the questioning child for this they suggest suggest that give them a list of questions and ask they think is the best or most interesting question discuss good and bad questions find out what questions they would like to have answered they if further suggest that can they think of a question that can never be answered can they question a text or topic fisher further suggests that ask children generate questions on a chosen topic in twos or threes share and analyze questions together how many different questions were created discuss the kinds of questions that were asked what were the most interesting questions what made them interesting these are the things which promote thinking among the learners among the students through questioning remember that questioning is not meant to make a student feel uncomfortable or intimidated 
Student will not always have the right answer. That is to be expected. They are still learning. So you don't expect always they will give the right answer. And don't make them feel un uncomfortable. As a teacher, it's your responsibility. Asking questions must be an interesting activity. Must be a comfortable activity in a class. Then it promotes thinking. Make sure questions are clear. Ask questions intended to help student progress to higher order thinking. Obviously, we must, as we uh, saw earlier that most of the time we are focusing on the fact finding questions. So instead of that, we must focus upon the questions which promote higher order thinking. Does the same thing, avoid asking too many factual questions. Don't threaten while asking question. If the answer is not given, either don't threaten. And questions not, must be posed like a threat. And do not avoid the answers. Whatever answer the learner is giving, respect that, consider that, do not avoid it. It reflects his or her thinking. After this idea of questioning, now let us talk about the another important tool of thinking that is concept. A concept is a general idea that stands for a general class and represents the common characteristic of all objects or events of this general class. Concept as a tool help in thinking. For example, if I ask my student, okay, think about which has uh, four legs, it's a, a pet, very loyal, one tail. Now, a commonly, students start thinking about dog, a concept is evolved. Here, the concept of dog has been used as a tool of thinking. When we say elephant, the concept of elephant immediately pr uh, promotes student to think about the characteristic of elephant, the size, the behavior and like this. Thus, concept is used as an important tool of thinking. In today's session, uh, let us have a review that we discussed about various tools of thinking. We discussed about questioning as a tool of thinking. We discussed do's and don'ts while using questioning as a tool of thinking and we discussed about the concept as a tool of thinking. Now you should ask yourself that which type of questions do you ask more in your class as a teacher? What is your purpose of asking questions in your class? And how concepts help in thinking? These are the references which I have used in my presentation. I hope this uh, session must have been useful for you. Uh, in any other session with a different topic, we will meet again. Till then, thank you very much.